Thank you, Father, that we can receive this gift through the body of Christ, through the fivefold ministry, and we honor you for what you are doing in and through his life. And also today, as we receive this word, to be challenged and go to the next level. And that's what you have for us. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. So good to be here. Um, I come with lots of greetings. Lots of greetings from our staff and our pastors there at Ex Christian Church. And um, special greetings from Grant and Tina. <laughs> they are missing bloom, but they are enjoying it. And uh, yeah, God is using them just so effectively. And um, it's, they're just such a blessing to us there. Also, Dickens and Bronwyn, they send lots of greetings. Um, man, is God using them. It's just awesome. Um, and also then, I think the most important is special greetings from my wife, Rieta, which is, um, she's missing everybody, really wish she could be here with me. But um, yeah, she and the kids are at home. Can you believe it? <laughs> so yeah, just so wonderful to, to really um, see what God is doing to really be able to see how he's working there with us, here with you, and to be able to connect. Isn't that just awesome? Able to connect. And, um, you know, every time when we think about um, our Father's home church, when we think about uh, the Creari Training Center here in Bloemfontein, you know, all of us there at, at our church, we, we just think with so much honor, and with so much respect to the anointing that God has put here. There's such an anointing that God has placed on this church, on Creari Training Center, our leadership. Such an anointing. And it's a, it's, man, anointing is beautiful. Huh? It's just so beautiful. It's just the most beautiful thing, right? And um, so when we think of you guys, we just think of that beauty. We just think of the beauty that God has placed in this place. And um, I know COVID has, has taken a lot from all of us. I said in the first service, I even write it now with a small letter. You know, like you write Satan with a small letter. Don't even want to say the S, you know. Just Ethan. So almost like over it. Okay. Don't want to give it the respect. Okay. I say, man, can this word be spoken more than Jesus? We say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Can the most Googled thing be Jesus? Huh? Liebe Machtag. Okay, so. It's taken, and uh, you know, I was I was chatting to some of the guys in last week, and you know, we just realized that that uh, church will never be the same. It's not going to be the same. You know, there's um, there's aunties and uncles that used to sit in certain places in church, and um, they will just never be able to sit there again. There was a specific. One guy in, in our church, um, and he just felt his ministry was to greet at the door. And doesn't matter how many services, he's always there. If we have three services, he's there every single service. If we have five services, he's there every single service. He's at the door and he greets every single person that walks in there. And if the children come... He goes, he says, wait, wait, wait. And he takes out a little sweetie. I actually needed to tell him at some point, listen, you, you can't, you know, parents teach their children not to take sweets from strangers. So maybe don't do that. But he kept doing it still. I knew. That worm. He will never be able to do it again. So, uh, 
stupid goat. Now I'm crying. <laughs> but we've all lost something. Some might have lost their jobs. Some might have lost, um, you know, uh, uh, a friend or a colleague. Some might have lost money. A lot of us lost loved ones. And that's the worst loss. Some people in our church, some people in this church, old lady who always came every single month right on time, the Saturday she comes and she starts pouring already the communion cups, that Sunday everything is ready. That auntie is not there. I don't even know if we will even do communion the same way. But you know what? God is good. God can use this and He is using it. And I think that's what's awesome. That's what's awesome. Now in the midst of all of this, let's call it chacha. All of this chacha. God still has anointing. There's still an anointing on the church. There's still an anointing on each and every one of us. You know there's an anointing on our Father's home. There's an anointing on the Kriari Training Center. There's an anointing on the leadership. There's an anointing on every single one of us sitting here. And it's so easy with all of this chach to just get, excuse my French, blasé with the anointing. We can easily get blasé. We can easily just think, oh, I just do it. Now, I want to I share you, with you this, like a little bit of a definition of what is anointing. Anointing is a special endowment to accomplish a task which is backed by heaven. I must say this because this is a beautiful word. It's a special endowment. However you can interpret it, coming down to accomplish a task which is backed by heaven. God has a task for you. He has a task corporately for this church, the Creori Training Center. He has a task. But you know what? He gives an anointing so that all of heaven backs that and we can move in it. So it becomes, you know, the scripture says um, anointing breaks the yoke anointing breaks the yoke okay so that means it's easy right what comes easy in your life what just sort of naturally flows out of you that might just be part of the anointing that god has in this ministry the prophetic is something that sort of just naturally flows I mean, if I speak about day words to other people out there, they're like, what? It just naturally flows. It's part of the anointing on this ministry. It's part of the anointing of what God is doing, right? But it's so easy to get blasé with it. And I know from this pulpit, there's been lots of discussion about not getting blasé with the word. Don't get blasé with the Word of God. Let's live the Word, do the Word, not just be hearers, but doers. But I want to today speak about, let's honor the anointing that God has placed in this place. Let's honor the anointing on our leadership. Let's honor the anointing on what God has placed on you individually. Now, there was a guy um, who, so I don't want to say fell in the same trap, but, you know, for the loss of other words or better words, this guy got blasé with the word, uh, sorry, with the anointing. This guy is called Samson. Anybody know him? Now, you can read about him 
in, uh, in, in the book of Judges uh, 13, 14, and 15. And if you want to do yourself a favor this week, go and read through that. It's just amazing. I mean, I wish I could take five, six, seven Sundays and just work through that. You know, um, amazing. Go read through it. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. But this guy had an anointing that was there to deliver Israel from its oppressors. So his anointing would break the yoke that the oppressors had over Israel, a.k.a. the Philistines. The Philistines oppressed them. So God anointed this man, made him very strong. You know, I, I actually carry the same anointing. I just, uh, you know, if I take off my shirt, you'll see. But um, it's... it's <sighs> God called this guy. He called him from the womb. Okay. Not the Zoom, the womb. Okay. God called him from the womb and he said, You will be a Nazarite to me. And he said this three things. Three things that he must do. It's three practical things he needed to do to allow for the flow of anointing through his life. God told this to his parents. He ended up living that way, he, uh, the way of the Nazarite. Okay? These three things. Firstly, he's not allowed to drink. Okay? That's wine. It's not water. Okay? He was not allowed to drink anything from the vine. Even um, in some circles, they said he was not even allowed to touch a grape. Because that produced actual wine. Crazy, huh? So that's the first thing. Not allowed to, to, um, to drink alcohol. Second thing, he was not allowed to eat anything that is unclean. So it's your normal pigs and things, you know. I'm just glad I don't have that covenant with God. You know. I love that pig, yeah. But, um, but now, you know, he said you're not allowed to eat. Now, part of that is you're not allowed to touch a dead anything. You can't touch anything that's dead. You can't, uh, or a carcass, right? You can't even touch anything that has touched anything dead. So let's say the wife touched the little rat that she just killed. You're not allowed to touch the wife. Okay, so it's quite intense. The third thing that he needed to do is never cut his hair. Crazy. Never cut his hair. Now, interesting, God put these three things, said, this is what you do, and then the what will flow. The anointing will flow. So the anointing flows, the anointing to release and deliver the Israelites from their oppressors because that anointing breaks the yoke. Right. But old Simpson, Samson, Samsung, he, he got a little bit blasé. Started to realize, man, I'm strong. Do you know? All of a sudden, he takes the donkey bone, whoop, kills 3,000 guys with the donkey bone. You know, they tie him down with ropes. He just goes, <clears throat> and it all flies off, you know. It's almost like the movies, you know, the Marvel movies. You see Thor and Thor and, you know, all the names. I can't remember them. But, and that's the way he lived. It was just like so. And, you know, he started to speak in a specific way. He started to say, listen, I will go and do this. Listen, I, it will be like I've always done. I will just break off the ropes. I will just do this. I will just kill this. Okay? Started to speak like that. Started to compromise. Okay. Who knows compromise is probably one of the worst things you can do. Huh? Started to compromise. Now... 
He came to a place in, in, in Judges 14, verse 5, where, look, this guy had a thing with women, you know. I think if, if I had that type of a six-pack, I would also have a thing with women. Hey, but um, this guy just went for it. He had this wife. He had another wife. Yet, you know, I'm, I'm reading through that three chapters and I'm trying to count it, you know, and I'm thinking this dude is on another planet, you know, really likes women. And then, um, then he, oh, sorry, and prostitutes and concubines and all these things. And, um, but bottom line in, in Judges 14, he goes for a woman to look at a woman, to gaze upon the beauty. And so he walks, and it, the scripture says he goes down into the vineyard. What is a vineyard? Ha, huh, grapes. He goes down into the vineyard, and you know, it says that he, he didn't tell his parents that that's where he went. Why do you think he wouldn't tell them? They would ask, what on earth were you doing in a vineyard? He started moving away under the authority that God has placed him under. So he went into the vineyard, which is the first thing. Do not drink. In essence, do not even touch a grape. <laughs> so let's go into the vineyard. First thing, he compromised. Compromised on that Call it a rule. Call it a practicality. Right? Second thing, while he was there, while he was walking down, this lion came and attacked him. Okay? And he took the lion and the scripture said he tore the lion. Now, I mean, I did that just last week. So it's not that difficult. You know? But um, it's, uh, he tore it. Can you believe it? And he left the carcass right there. So he went on to go and view the woman, right? That was, the, uh, no, sorry, it's not yet the second thing. When he came back, that was the second thing. He came back from viewing the woman. And he walked past this, this carcass. And there was honey inside of the carcass. Now to me, you know, just thinking it, I have a little bit of a visual brain. So... It, it just sounds a little bit disgusting anyway, you know. But um, what he did is he, he went down, he reached into the carcass, he took the honey, and he ate it. And the scripture says he took even enough to go and he, take, he took it to his parents to eat. Didn't tell them. That honey was unholy. Because it was in the carcass. He touched the carcass, which is the third thing. Eating unholy things. Not touching things that even touch dead things. Right? So this guy came to a point where he started compromising more and more and more. Later on, you can, you can read it. It goes with... Delilah, and I think we know the story, she came to this place, um, sort of asking him, listen, where, what's the secret to your strength? Okay, the secret is, you know, you tie me with these types of ropes. Then the next morning he wakes up and Delilah goes, oh, the Philistines is upon you. And he goes, oh, breaks through the ropes. Then she says, oh, you lied to me. <laughs> and she says, um, you tell me now, what is the real thing? He says, no, no, actually, it needs to be this, another type of rope that is fresh and new. Next morning, he wakes up. The Philistines is upon you. <laughs> Just falls off. And so she goes, and you can go read it. It's a few times. I think it's three times that she does that. He ends up saying, listen, what will help is, is you, um, you, you tie my hair. Next morning he wakes up, his hair is in a bundle. The Philistines is upon you. Oh, got you out. Samson 
was playing around. I mean, even if you are a little bit, a little bit, you know, not all up there, you would know that this lady is looking for the secret to your strength. She is a Philistine. Okay? Even if you can't do math, one plus one becomes two. Okay? It's not stupid. So this is it. He's playing with this anointing. Joking around with it. And after this, Delilah just said, you know what? You're the worst person I know. Lying to me all the time. What a, what a, what a. And, um, and he ended up saying, no, if you cut my hair. Next morning wakes up. Philistines is upon you and <coughs> can't do anything. Capture him. Stick out his eyes. He lost his sight, but he lost his sight in the spirit too. He had actually already lost it before he lost his physical eyes. Now, I want to tell you this. The power is not in the hair. I mean, look at me and Apostle Cornelius. Huh? We strong. The power is not in the hair. The power was in the covenant he made with God. That's where the power is. A covenant his parents made with God even before he was born. A covenant he ended up walking and living throughout his life. Because the things he needed to do to maintain that covenant. And to allow for the anointing to flow through. That's the things he did. And when he left those things because he got blasé. Because he thought I am it all. He lost his power. It left him. It's not about the hair. I want to ask you today. Where have you maybe become blasé with your anointing? Where have you become blasé with the anointing, the corporate anointing in this ministry? Where have you come to a place where you said, listen, I just do it. You know, it just happens. Where have you started to compromise on the things that God has said? There's a lot of things in this ministry that God has said years ago, which are basic, practical things. Basic practical things. And those things allow for anointing to flow. And maybe you don't like those basic practical things, but it allows the anointing to flow. If you take those basic practical things away, the anointing will lift. Where are we compromising? Now, it's so interesting after... After um, Simpson fell, he was captured, he's there doing his thing. And the, 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 the scripture says his hair started growing back. Now it's something I can only wish for. And a few of us. <laughs> his hair started growing back. Is the power in the hair? No. What it's really saying here, what it's really saying is his heart came back to God. Slowly but surely. If you can imagine how long it takes hair to grow. Slowly but surely, over time, his heart drew near to God. His heart came back to God. So much so that he came to a point where he repented. He said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because what I did... I made it all about me. But Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. You are the one that gives the anointing. You are the one that enables me. And so that is what started to happen. 
ended up coming to a place where, where the Philistines, they were so happy that they now slayed this Simpson, Samson. And they decided, let's call a massive celebration. We're all going to celebrate together. We get all the leaders of the whole country, all the ministers, prime ministers, everybody is there with their limousines in this big place, 3,000 people together. And Samsung is there, tied for display. People walking around him, spitting at him. They're angry because he killed some of their friends. They said, yeah, look at that. Look at you. Bada, bada, bada. And Samson is standing there. Ooh. He says, Lord, I'm crying too much today. He says, Lord, one more time. Lord, just one more time. I'm so sorry. But Lord, send your anointing once more. came to the realization of what God is doing, who God is. And God responded. The anointing was there. And he pulled everything together. And 3,000 people died. The leadership of an entire country. Why? Because he had a six-pack. It was because of anointing. So I want to tell you today, let's not dishonor anointing. Let's honor anointing. Let's honor the anointing over your own life. Honor the anointing over the lives of your leaders. Honor the anointing over this church, this ministry. Honor, 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 honor. Because then there will be a flow. It will be easy. Easy. The anointing breaks the yoke. Yes, over my life. It makes what I need to do easy. But what's more, it breaks the yoke over others. God has given you anointing not just for yourself. It's for others too. Just quickly, four things I want to share with you. Um, in how to honor anointing. How do you honor anointing? <clears throat> Whether it's your own, the ministry, your leaders, how do you honor it? Number one, you grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will be your guide. Holy Spirit will be your protector. If you move out from out under the anointing, he will draw you back. But it's about the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number one. Number two, keep your heart pure. It's easy to not like anybody. What's harder is to keep your heart pure. It's easy to have fights. It's harder to keep your heart pure. But keep your heart pure. Make sure that there's no compromise. Purity of heart means that there's no compromise. It's number two. Number three, value the anointing. So it's not just the way I see anointing and how wonderful anointing is and how sweet it is and how beautiful it is. That's one thing. But how do I speak about the anointing on my own life? How do I speak about the anointing over my pastor? The anointing over the ministry? What am I saying? What are my actions doing? That's the way I value anointing. Then the fourth one is glorify Jesus when he uses you. Coming to a place of saying, Lord, it's not, about, it's not about me. It's about you. I'm just a vessel. 
It's the flow of your anointing that rests upon me that causes things to happen. It's the flow of your anointing that makes it easy for me. It's not about titles. It's not about positions. All these things. It's not at all about that. You know, they call me a pastor. Then I say, most people at our church just, just call me Pastor Jay. Okay. Now they type a message and they say, hi, Pastor Jay. And I'm thinking like, you know what? It's easier to just say, hey, Yaku. Because Yaku only has four letters. Now you go Pastor or space J. That's eight. It's double the effort. I was a pastor long before I, I had the position. Long before. It's an anointing that God puts. Every time I see the word pastor in front of my name, or every time somebody phones me and says, Hi, pastor. Every time I hear that, you know what it does in my heart? It reminds me of the anointing on my life. It's a reminder that, yes, I'm answering this phone call. doesn't matter what the situation is. Maybe the kids are shouting at each other, hitting each other with sticks. But when I hear, hey, pastor, I hear, okay, Yaku, now you're serving the people of God. That's what you're doing. Brings me right back to that. Sure, title, position. That's nothing. What is something is the anointing of God. So every time God uses you, thank Him. Say, Lord, I thank you. You pray for somebody, they get healed. Lord, I thank you because it's you. I'm only the hand that put the hand there. Every time you just thank Him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every time um, you, you praying for somebody, the, something happens. God's protection is there. You thank God for that. Whatever you do, thank Him. So these four things, how to honor anointing. Trust the Lord that you grow in them. Trust the Lord that you honor anointing in this place. Honor the anointing over your own life. Grow in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Keep your heart pure with no compromise. Value the anointing with your words and your actions and glorify Jesus every time He uses you. Amen. Now, I just want to pray for us. Let's just close our eyes. Yes, Lord, I thank you for the anointing that rests in this place. A soft, sweet, beautiful anointing. Lord, and today we come before you. And we say, Lord, we're so sorry. We repent, Lord. Where we might have become blasé with our own anointing. The anointing in this place. Anointing over our leaders. Lord, we're sorry. We ask your forgiveness, Lord. Lord, will you help us to get back to the practical things that allows for anointing? Will you help us to identify those things in our lives, in the lives of this ministry? We thank you for that, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that your anointing will be recovered and will be refreshed in every person's life here today. We honor you for your anointing. Help us to honor the anointing. We honor you. We praise you, Lord. Because it's you. It's you, it's you, it's you. Lord, and we, we ask today that you will break the yoke of oppression in every person's life. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the yoke will be broken. In Jesus' name. That your anointing will come. 
and that there will be a peace, a rest, and an ease of doing things. And we honor you for that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's live it. Let's trust the Lord together. His anointing, breaking the yoke in your life. And let's enjoy it. It's beautiful. Amen. Amen. Thank you.